Turn your Bibles to Psalm 12, please. The 12th Psalm. <clears throat> Eight verses here. We're going to read these verses. And we'll read them responsibly. We'll begin together on verse 1, and I'll read 2, and we'll alternate until we end on verse number 8 of the 12th Psalm. Psalm 12. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the Scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on verse 1 of Psalm 12. Ready? Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words. Has silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And let's finish with verse 8 together as well. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music today and for the good spirit that's here this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we're asking you now that you will prepare our hearts and we'll be ready to receive what you have for us today. Thank you for this group that's uh, passing through on the way to Colorado, and I'm praying, God, you'll bless the special now, that it'll put our heart in tune with your heart. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Bellos, and this is Aiden Scary. We're the mixed duet from Elma Baptist Academy in Brighton, Colorado, and today we'll be singing a song for you entitled He Already Sees. <laughs> disciples were afraid for the waves were high and the ship was tossed they could not find their way then they awoke the master saying lord please save us now he rebuked the wind and the sea grew calm and they all wondered how god sees the storm from the other side I 
can feel God's arms around me as he whispers, let it be. Thank you. That's great. Wonderful. Father, we thank you now for this morning, and Lord, thank you that in reminding us that you see everything, and you know the end from the beginning. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to trust you in all that we do. Now, Father, I'm asking for your help as we come to the preaching of your word this morning. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for preserving it and allowing us to hold copies in our hand this morning. <clears throat> now, Lord, I need your help today. Lord, I realize that I'm going to touch on a subject today that some will be encouraged by, some will be challenged by, and some could easily get offended by. I don't want that to happen. I pray that you would speak to their heart and help each of us to take the truth from this morning and desire for us to have that in our life for you. So control the next few moments that we spend together. Help me to say what I need to say and leave unsaid what I don't need to say. And Lord, may the Holy Spirit of God take these words and put it into each and every heart. I'll thank you in advance what I believe you'll do, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to establish something this morning, and that is God is faithful. God is faithful. What does that mean? It means God's reliable. It means He's dependable. It means you can count on Him 100% of the time. God is faithful. In other words, He not only saves, He's faithful to save. He, he, and by the way, if you've never trusted Him as your Savior, that's what you should do today. Uh, today's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And if you'll call on the Lord, He will save you. He's faithful to save. He doesn't sometimes save when you call. He will every time save when you call. Uh, when someone believes in Christ, He doesn't sometimes save and sometimes not save. He always saves. He is a faithful Savior. He's faithful to save. He's not only faithful to save, He's faithful to keep. I'm glad that once I get saved, I don't have to keep myself saved. Uh, if that was up to us, we would lose it time and time again. But it's not up to us. We are kept by the power of God unto salvation. And God keeps us saved. He's faithful to do that. He's faithful to keep His Word. He's faithful to forgive. He not only provides, He's faithful to provide. He not only gives grace, He's faithful to give grace. He doesn't just answer to prayer. He's faithful to answer prayer. God is faithful. He's not only faithful in temptation, he, he's, he's always faithful in times of temptations. In fact, in Revelation chapter 19, the Bible says when He comes back and returns uh, to set up His kingdom on earth, He'll be a, sitting upon a white horse, and, and it says the name of the one sitting on the white horse is called Faithful and True. He is faithful. Establish that. We know that. We've heard that. I want you to make sure that's in your mind this morning. We sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. All I have needed thou hast provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. But in your Bible, in Psalm 12, as we open it up there, the psalmist makes an observation. And the observation he makes is verse number one, Help, Lord. Well, what is he asking help for? Because the godly man ceaseth 
For the faithful fail from among the children of men. Notice, the godly man seeth. Did you know that if there's no faithfulness, there's no godliness? The godly are always found among the faithful. If you are not faithful, you are not godly. Don't get mad at me. It's what the book says. It is what that verse teaches. I know. I, I run into people all the time who, who aren't faithful to anything and not faithful to the things of God, yet they tell me how wonderful their relationship with God is. Well, then I'll let God be true and every man you can fill in the blank. But that's, that, that's in fact, notice what it says. They speak, verse 2, vanity, everyone with his neighbor. What's vanity? Emptiness. Nothingness. Their words don't mean anything. Why? They have flattering lips and a double heart do they speak. But the Lord will cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. I know this. If the tongue is speaking proud things, it's not of God. Because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. If your tongue is speaking proud things, it's not of God. And then it says, we, With our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? See, as long as you have the attitude that nobody telling me what to do. Nobody's, nobody's giving me orders. Nobody's telling me how to live. You'll never be faithful. And if you're not faithful, you'll never be godly. The godly man, he's saying, help us, Lord. Help us, for the godly man ceaseth. The faithful man fail among the children of men. Proverbs, Solomon asked this question. Every man will proclaim his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? He's saying, I, I understand. I, I find all kinds of men to tell me how good they are and what good they're doing and what they're all about, but who can find the faithful man? He's really asking the same question the psalmist has asked in Psalm 12. I think Solomon might have been saying, well, I can find the busy man, but can I find the faithful man? Oh, I can find the tired man. Can I find the faithful man? I can find the sports man. Can I find the faithful man? I can find the money man. Can I find the faithful man? I can find the moral man. Can I find the faithful man? I can find the family man. Can I find the faithful man? I can find a thoughtful man, but can I find a faithful man? I think the one lost thing in our 21st century Christianity is this thing called faithfulness. Faithfulness. Being faithful to the things of God. What's it mean? Dependability. What's it mean? Reliability. Doing what the Lord desires me to do and doing it faithfully. We live in a day when, it's, when, when it seems like we just do everything we can or our churches are doing everything they can just to get people to come for an hour on a Sunday morning and then be happy. And, and some churches, it's been so hard to get them back on Sunday night or back on a Wednesday night, they just done away with it and just decided to have Sunday morning. And then we'll see you next week because they can't get anybody to be faithful. Because there's no faithfulness in, in the hearts of people. I have missionaries now. I, 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 had, I had talked to Brother Cato recently, and uh, he was going to be here during our missions trip and, and, and report in and uh, preach on Wednesday night. And um, he said, oh, Wednesday night? He goes, I don't, I don't get many of those. I said, really? He goes, yeah, pastors don't we have on Wednesday night because they don't have any people there. So they don't have a missionary in when no one's there. He said, that's, that's changed from when he started 30 years ago. He said, that's changed a lot. used to be Wednesday night was the preferred time they'd have you in. I've talked to, I, I, I just recently, a pastor had written in a, in a forum I'm in with pastors, and he, he's just not sure what to do. He has 100 on Sunday morning. He has about 35 or 40 on Sunday night, and he said, tonight, Wednesday night service, there were four of us for Wednesday night. What do I do? The norm, the normal in most, most churches, and I'm not saying that's right, is they say, well, you have, a, you have 100 on Sunday morning, you get half that on Sunday night, and you get half of that on Wednesday night. 
So if you have 100 on Sunday morning, you get 50. Sunday night, you get 25 on Wednesday night. And my question is, where are the faithful people? Where is faithfulness? Where does that, where, where does that come in? What is, no wonder we seem to have more churches and less impact in our country than ever before. Less influence than ever before. Shame on us. Shame on us. I want to remind you this morning that God has not called you to be successful. God has called you to be faithful. God has not called you to be great. He's called you to be faithful. God has not called you to be well liked. He's called you to be faithful. God is not calling you to be popular. He's calling you to be faithful. He's not called you to be talented. He's called you to be faithful. He's not calling you to be well known. He's calling you to be faithful. We cry out and we say, God, I want you to use me. And God, I want you to bless me. And God, use my life. And God just says, hey, I'll use the Christian who's faithful. And all God's saying is, I, I, I'll, I'll keep my end of the deal, but I cannot bless you. I cannot use you. I cannot do what I want to do with you because you will not be faithful. Where is the faithful? What holds God back is our unfaithfulness to Him. Now we, I told our Sunday school class that they're, they're getting a double dose today. We taught on this in Sunday school. I had, uh, the Lord had put this message on faithfulness on my heart last Sunday evening. And I knew that's what I was going to do this Sunday. And then I looked at the lesson for Sunday school and it was the same thing. And I thought, well, I guess we need a double dose. But in Luke chapter 16, I want you to turn there if you're with me, if you would please. Luke chapter 16, the Lord Jesus tells us to be faithful in the little things. Notice with me Luke 16 and verse 10, would you please? He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? By the way, that's a stewardship verse and God is simply saying if I can't trust you with the unrighteous mammon money how could I trust you with the true riches that he'd like to give us if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own saying listen are you faithful in the little things if you're faithful in the little things then you'll be faithful in the big things it all starts with little things. Do you put your clothes away? Do you put things back where they belong? Is the inside of your car clean? Or does it look like a garbage dump? Does your backyard look as good as your front yard? Things that nobody sees as good as the ones that people do see? You see, a lot of us look at David and Goliath and we see David, the, 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 the king, and we see David killing the giant. But don't look at David killing the giant and don't look at David being the king of Israel and, and the man after God's own heart. You know what I look at? I look at David when he was a, just a young boy taking care of the sheep when nobody was around. Doing exactly what dad told him to do. And, and the fact that he went to where the battle was was because Dad told him to go. He was just doing what he was supposed to do. He was faithful in the little things and God let him do great things. And he was faithful in the great things. You see, I think of Joseph. Faithful to the Lord. His brothers hated him. He was still faithful to the Lord. He got sold as a slave into Egypt and became part of Potiphar's house. He was still faithful to the Lord. He got falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and got thrown into prison. He was still faithful to the Lord. 
And God brought him into favor with the warden. And he got to run some of the things in the prison. But he was faithful in all those little things, all those steps leading up to it. And then when he got exalted and he got promoted to be second in command to Pharaoh in all the land of Egypt, well, he was faithful in the big things too. If you're faithful in the little things, God will allow you to have some big things to do. But if God is, God is looking and I think God says, well, why would I give you something bigger to do when you're not faithful with what I've given you to do? See? Be faithful in the little things. God will, help, will allow you to be faithful in the big things. And God will use you to do big things. Let me ask you a question. If your car starts two or three mornings a week, would you say you got a faithful car? If your television snapped on four days a week instead of seven, by the way, it'd probably be good for you, but if it did, you, you, would, you would say something's wrong here. I, I'm not going to settle for this. If your phone worked five out of seven days, would you say, boy, I got a great phone here? No, if you picked it up, I would venture to say if you picked it up one time and it was a blank screen and you couldn't get it to do anything, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't set it down and say, well, it'll probably work tomorrow. You'd say, we've got to do something about this. <laughs> this isn't acceptable. What about if your employer gave you your paycheck three out of four weeks? Isn't it funny how we expect faithfulness in our cars and our electronics and our employers, but we sure don't expect to give it to God? Seven days a week to read your Bible. How many days have you read your Bible? Tithe every payday. If there were, if there are fifty-two paydays. Would you have 52 tithes given to God? Would you have 50? Would you have 48? If, if, God, if God took what you gave to Him last year and multiplied it by 10, how would you live? How would you live? You say, well, Pastor... I couldn't live on that. Well, you, but you expect God to thrive on that. You expect the work of God to get done on that. Hmm? No, if you couldn't live well on that, why do you think God's work would do well on that? Hmm? Don't bow your head. It's not time to pray. You couldn't be considered a faithful tither. I don't just want to be a, a, a Bible reader. I want to be a faithful Bible reader. I don't just want to be a tither. I want to be a faithful tither. I don't just want to be a, a church member. I want to be a faithful church member. Church three times a week. That's 156 services a year. Would you have 156? Would you have 104? Because you don't come Wednesday night? Would you have just 52 because you only come Sunday morning? 52 out of 156? Your boss calls you in and says, you know, out of the last 156 days, you've been at work 52. I just want to commend you for your faithfulness in being employed here. <laughs> Wouldn't happen, would it? Hmm? it? It wouldn't happen if you had 104 out of 156. He would say, this, something, something's got to give here. This isn't acceptable. And you, and you understand that. But somehow, we'll give it to our employer, but we don't want to give it to God. Somehow, our mindset changes. And we think God ought to be happy that I'm here once a week. But is that faithful? This has been around for years and years and years. 
I think I was, I think I read this first when I first started the ministry, you know, back when they chiseled things in stone and write it on tablets and, and, and it was in a book then, so I know it's pretty old, but it's, it's still applicable. It's really great. It's about Mrs. Craig and it, the, 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 the title of the article was, What's the Matter with Mrs. Craig? You know why? Because she hadn't missed a church service in 20 years. And the article went on to say, doesn't she ever get company? Doesn't she ever go out on a Saturday evening and is too tired to come on Sunday? Especially Sunday night? Doesn't she ever get a head cold or a cough or have a picnic? Doesn't she have friends who invite her out for the weekend? Doesn't she ever think it's too cold or too rainy? Doesn't she ever get her feelings hurt by somebody? Doesn't she ever just want to stay home, watch TV, and hear a good sermon? <laughs> they say, what's the matter with Mrs. Craig? You know, it's a sad day when we have to ask, what's the matter to the faithful Christian? Like something's wrong with someone when they're faithful? I would say nothing's wrong. Something's very, very right. Be faithful in the little things. We also mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'd like you to turn there with me if you would please. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Where Paul tells Timothy that being faithful is a qualification to teach others. Paul told Timothy in verse 1 of chapter 2, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to talented men. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, not, that's the wrong Bible I've got, huh? The same commit thou to, what, desirable men? No. Men who want to learn? No. Faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Commit these truths to faithful men. Not just men with ambition, not just men with personality, but faithful men. Then he gives some examples here. He tells them in verse number 3, Thou therefore, therefore, whenever there's a therefore there, you look to see what it's there for. And it's because of what he just said in verses 1 and 2. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So he's saying, Timothy, this is tied into faithful men. They, if you're going to be faithful, you're going to have to have these three things in your life. Number one, you're going to have to be a soldier. The key word for a soldier is sacrifice. Sacrifice. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. The soldier sacrifices the easy life. The soldier sacrifices the secure life. The soldier sacrifices his independent life for a dependent life. You're never going to be faithful until you understand sacrifice. Never is easy. You give up something. You'll never be a good soldier if you don't understand sacrifice. And the Christian who's going to be faithful is going to sacrifice free time. You're going to sacrifice fun time. You're going to sacrifice me time for God time. Boy, it's quiet in here. Are you willing? Yeah. You know what? You're going to sacrifice the independent life for a dependent life. We're depending on God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Are you willing to sacrifice? The second illustration he gives is verse 5, and it's that of an athlete. He said, if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is, he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. I've, I've never been a runner. <laughs> not, not hard to tell, huh? And uh, I like sports, and I like anything with a ball. I, I never stu understood why. The, I, in basketball, I, I used to hate the first part 
Uh, usually it started in September when school started because all you did was run. It was just, just getting in, in, they call it getting in shape, you know. That's overrated. But um, <laughs> rounds of shape, you know. And uh, so, but, but you know, these marathon runners, anybody, anybody uh, cross-country runners, distance runners, any of you? Not you, you're not, Roy. Quit raising your hand. <laughs> Running from the police doesn't count, Roy. All right, and uh, <laughs> takes takes <laughs> discipline. Takes it takes you know if you're going to have that kind of a lifestyle, it takes discipline. You have to. You don't just go out and run 26 miles. You got to begin to build up to that, and you begin to build up those miles every day. But I'll guarantee you, you don't do that but a few days and then and you, you, you go to about the third day and you say, I'm not going to go out and run 10 miles today and your body says, huh, not me, buddy. You've got you to make yourself do what your body is telling you not to do. And you've got to run, run through that and get through that. It's discipline. The key word is discipline for the athlete. You have to, you have to be disciplined when you run the race. You've seen the, the marathons, and particularly I'm thinking of the Olympics when I think of this because they, they start uh, in the stadium, then they go out and they go through the course, and they always end up in the stadium. You, you wait, and, you know, you, it's one of those things that takes a couple hours. You don't watch the whole thing. You know, you come back, and they say, oh, they're ready to come into the stadium. And can you imagine? First runner comes into the stadium, and he's on the track, and the crowd's cheering, and, and pretty soon another guy shows up, and he's probably 30 yards behind. And as he gets to the one side of the, the, the track, this guy's coming around, and this guy cuts across the infield to the other side and then gets ahead of the guy and comes across the finish line. Brilliant! <laughs> no, it's not brilliant, is it? Is he going to win? No. Why doesn't he win? Yeah, he broke the rules. He wasn't disciplined to, to run the course the way it's supposed to be run. You know, it's, it, it, you have to have discipline. There's no shortcuts. And let, let me tell you something. There's no shortcuts to faithfulness. You're, you're never, you're never going to be, you're never going to be faithful to read your Bible every day until you read your Bible on the days you don't want to read your Bible. You're never going to be faithful to pray daily until you pray on the days you don't feel like praying. You're never going to be faithful to the house of God until you're faithful to the church services when you don't feel like going. You have to be faithful, and that takes discipline. Sometimes you've got to grab yourself by the back of your collar and say, we're going. Let's go. Sometimes you feel like going. You're excited to go. But that won't be every time. So it takes discipline. So he gives his illustration of the soldier where the key word is sacrifice, the, the athlete where the key word is discipline. And then he says the husbandman. Now that's not a husband. That's a, that's a farmer basically in our language. He's, he says the husband that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. And then he tells us something in verse 7. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. He's saying, Timothy, Brother Wallace, what he said was, ponder on this a while. That's West Virginian there. St. Timothy, think about this a while. You think on these things. Here the farmer, the key word is labor. Labor. The farmer always works hard. He labors and works, and then he must have patience. He's got to prepare the ground, plant the seed, cultivate the ground, water it, fertilize it, and then have patience for the harvest to come. There are no instant results in farming. You have to wait for the harvest. And you know, sometimes what, what we do is we expect instant results from God. We do something and if it doesn't work, we have people who go out witnessing and they don't see anybody saved. They say, ah, that doesn't work. What do you mean doesn't work? Well, I prayed about it and then God didn't answer, so it, uh, that doesn't work. No, you have to have patience. 
Why did God say, in due season, you shall reap if you what? Feign not. Well, what is God saying? You better have some patience. There's no instant results in the work of God. Paul is praying for the church in, church in Galatia, the churches of Galatia. And he says, I'm, I'm travailing in birth again until Christ is formed in you. He says, I'm laboring and I'm, I'm working and I'm praying and I realize for Christ to be formed in you. That's, a, that's no instant thing. Don't expect instant results when you're serving God. Remember, he always talks about one sows and, and one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. Okay? It's, it's that analogy again that it's not coming up overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't faint. So what's it take? Sacrifice, discipline, and labor. Hard work. That's faithfulness. That's faithfulness. You know, look at John chapter 6 with me. I just thought of this. John chapter 6. Are you okay? You doing all right? Don't. Hope you're not too mad. John chapter 6. Um, Jesus has got a crowd following him. You know what's interesting about Jesus? He never tried to get a crowd. In fact, every time he got a crowd, he tried to thin the crowd out. I, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it baffled the apostles, the disciples. I'm sure they thought, what is he doing? And this was the case here. I mean, he's talking about the, the bread of life in chapter 6. It's a long chapter, and he begins to say, I'm the bread of life and, and the bread of God which came down from heaven in verse 33, verse 35. I'm the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth in me shall never thirst. Well, man, somebody tells me I'll never hunger, I'll never thirst. I'm in. And so they, they begin to follow him. He says, I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. And, and <laughs> then, he, then he does this, verse 51. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said unto them, Here it is, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. But whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Whew. I'm sure the disciples thought, no, not, not that, Jesus. Don't tell them that. No one will want to follow you. And you, you may be sitting there thinking, what is he talking about? Eat the flesh and drink the blood. It's kind of like gross. The key is verse 63. In that case, anybody ever to ask you about that? Notice what he said. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Here it is. You ready? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. Take the spirit of the words, not the actual words. He says, I'm giving you a spiritual truth here. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that would believe not and who should betray him. Notice verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples did what? Went back and walked no more with him. They wouldn't stay with him. You see, Jesus wasn't interested in having fans. He was interested in having followers. Are you a fan? Or are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Which are you? Lastly, let me say this. God rewards faithfulness. Number three, God rewards faithfulness. Proverbs 28 and verse 20. Proverbs 28 
and verse 20. The Bible says this, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. Hey, God has blessings to give. Hey, God has blessings to pour out on His children. God's waiting to open the windows of heaven and pour them out. What's He waiting for? Faithful people to pour them out upon. The faithful man won't just have blessings, won't just experience blessings, won't just see a few trickle in now and then. He'll abound with blessings. I like that word abound. Abraham was blessed and Moses was blessed and Joseph was blessed and Joshua was blessed and David was blessed and Job was blessed and Daniel was blessed. But they were blessed because they were faithful. The faithful man shall abound with blessing. Isn't God amazing? He requires that we be faithful and then he says, when you are, I'm going to bless you. He could have just said, hey, that's what you're supposed to do. Nobody, you, you don't do your job every day, and every day the boss is standing there at the end of the day saying, hey, great job today, thanks for working for me. No, you're spo- you say, hey, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm just doing my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's why I never understand football players who score a touchdown and they go crazy. You know what? That's what we pay you to do. Put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what you're supposed to you, you sack the quarterback and everybody does their big dance. Well, you know what? We pay you to sack the quarterback. Do your job. Go get them. Don't make a big deal about it. But, but God says, hey, you're going to be faithful and I will bless you abundantly if you are. That's incredible. Are you faithful? Are you dependable? Reliable? Are you a teacher or are you a faithful teacher? Are you an usher or are you a faithful usher? Are you a choir member or are you a faithful choir member? Are you a junior church worker or are you a faithful junior church worker? You're a member of Bible Baptist Church or are you a faithful member of Bible Baptist Church? If every member were as faithful as you, what would the church look like? If every member were as faithful as you, what would Sunday school look like? If every member were as faithful as you, What would Sunday night look like? If every member were as faithful as you, what would Wednesday night look like? If every member were as faithful as you, what would Saturday morning soul winning look like? I'd like to hear one day when I stand before Jesus, that he could say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The only thing good about us is Jesus. That's the only thing that makes us good. Will he be able to put that faithful in his commendation of you? That's the great thing about faithfulness. You know what? It's within everybody's reach. If we said, hey, there were were some years morning when when I said I want a couple people to sing, there were some over here. That didn't bother them a bit. They're ready to get up and sing. They know they they, they, they can sing. Some people over here were petrified. (laughs) Don't call on me. Just like some of you would be. God... God never said that he's that all of us are going to have to get up and sing. Hallelujah. He didn't say everybody's going to have to play the piano, everybody's going to have to You know what he did say? Everybody can be faithful. And everybody can be faithful. There's a 
song that Ron Hamilton wrote. I think it's a kid's song, but I think it's great. It goes like this. God gives to all his children talents both great and small. My heart belongs to Jesus. I'll let him have them all. I want to be faithful. I want to be true. I want to be faithful in all that I do. I want to be faithful in every test. I want to be faithful. I'll give him my best. Would that be your prayer today? Would you say, God, I want to be faithful. I'll give you my best. What's missing? Faithfulness. Let's let's not be I don't want to be average. I don't, want, I don't want to be that church, never have been, and I don't intend to start now. I don't want to be that church that has that 100 on Sunday and 50 on Wednesday and 20, or 50 on Sunday night and 25 on Wednesday night. Folks ought to be faithful. Amen? Three to thrive. Faithfulness. Let's, let's be faithful to the Lord. In the little things... Let's be faithful to be able to teach others. And let's ask God that we could abound with the blessings because of faithfulness. Father, thank you for the truth this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone today. Lord, a a message that is challenging to us all, that we be faithful in what you've called us to do. It's so easy to, to give in to the flesh and not be faithful. Forgive us for that, Father. The times that we thought of ourselves more than we thought of obeying what you want us to do. And I'm asking you this morning, Father, you would challenge the hearts of your people this morning to be faithful. Thank you, Lord, for telling us what you expect and putting it all within our grasp. Can't all have talent, can't all uh, sing or teach or be in the spotlight, so to speak, but we can all be faithful, and that's all you've required. I'm praying, God, that you'll, you have spoken to people's hearts, that today could be a life-changing day for many in this room. Today would be a day when many would decide I'm reading my Bible every day whether I feel like it or not. I'm going to pray to God every day whether I feel like it or not. I'm going to witness to others and give them a gospel track and tell them about Jesus whether I feel like it or not. I'm going to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night whether I feel like it or not. I want to be faithful. I want to be true. Speak to hearts, Lord. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment. But before I pray, I wonder how many folks in the room this morning would say, Pastor, if I died this morning, I know for sure that I would go to heaven. There's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner, and I knew that sinners deserve to die and go to hell. But I knew that God loved me enough that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay my sin debt for me. And there's a time when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior and what he did for me. And I received the gift of eternal life. And, Pastor, I know that I'm saved today. I'm trusting Jesus as my Savior. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony and say, I know that I'm saved today? Would you slip your hand up? All right, you may put it down. You here today would say, Pastor, I'm not sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't know that I've ever had a time in my life when I accepted Christ as my Savior. Pastor, pray for me. I'm concerned about it. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down? I can pray for you. Just slip it up and put it back down. I'll see it. The message was to believers, and that's the hands that I saw this morning. The question is, 
that the Holy Spirit of God is asking your heart this morning, are you faithful? And I wonder how many believers here today would say, Preacher, the Spirit of God has dealt with my heart. I don't just want to be a Christian. I want to be a faithful Christian. I want to be faithful. I want to be true. Preacher, God has dealt with my heart this morning. Pray for me today. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Seal that decision at the altar. Just bow the knee to Him. Tell Him what area, whatever area He dealt with you about. Our area is, and tell Him, I, I intend to be faithful. I need your help. He will help you to be faithful. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts today. Lord, I pray that your will will be done in each and every life as we come to this invitation. That those whom you've spoken to will respond to what you've said. will bow the knee to you this morning. If any in the room have never received Christ as their Savior while the others are coming to pray, I pray they'd come. And let someone take a Bible and show them how they can know Christ as their Savior. If folks are here today and they're saved and they've never been scripturally baptized, I pray they'd come and say, I want to be faithful to God. I need to be baptized. Maybe there's some here who saved and baptized and they believe this is where they ought to belong and serve God. May they come and say, we want to belong and we want to serve the Lord here. Whatever it is that you're prompting them to do in their heart, I pray they'd be obedient to you this morning. May your will be done in these next few moments and I'll thank you for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays the invitation in, Brother Bob's going to sing it. The Lord has spoken to your heart. Respond God to Him this morning. To all His children, that's right. Talents of great Amen. and small, my gifts belong to Jesus. I'll let Him use them all. I want to be faithful. I want to be true. I want to be faithful in all that I do. I want to be faithful through every test. I want to be faithful. I'll give him my best. When we are serving Jesus, no task can be too small if we obey the savior then we will hear his call i want to be faithful i want to be true i want to be faithful in all that i do I want to be faithful through every test. I want to be faithful. I'll give him my best. I want to live for Jesus. I want to please God's Son. If he has found me faithful, I'll hear him say, well done. I want to be faithful. If you know I it, you want sing to it. be true. I want to be faithful in all that I do. I want to be faithful through every test. I want to be faithful. I'll give him my best. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your great faithfulness to us. Help us to give that back to you. Be faithful to what you've called us to do, what you've called us to be. 
We love you, Lord. Thank you for a good morning this morning, for decisions that have been made for you. Lord, thank you for meeting with us. Pray your blessing now in the afternoon. Be with us as we go our separate ways and give us a good Sunday afternoon and prepare us for what you have for us tonight in the service. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joined heads with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.